Okay, we are going to um, go forward to the city manager's comments under G. <clears throat> Mr. Olson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we are going to have a performance report on our fleet maintenance operations. Jim Davis is going to present that to us now. Good afternoon, Jim Davis, uh, fleet maintenance today. This CPR report is, is a report and, and it's a good one because it shows trends and it particularly uh, important is the trend we did a week ago when you approved 92 vehicles and that's reflected in this report in various ways and I'll highlight it as I go through it. I'm gonna start at the lower right hand edge of it and then I'm gonna go to the left side and work down from the top. And basically, Bill Russell, the great Celtic center, made a comment about basketball. What he said was, you know, in the end, you can play defense, you can run plays, and you can do all kinds of things. But in the end, it's buckets. It's goals that count. And in the fleet, it's production that counts. For example, refuse trucks. We have to pick up the refuse in this city, and so on and so forth. So if you look at these metrics on the right side, uh, they're, they're, they're all based on shift. They're not based on total 24-7 availability. In other words, we have a service level agreement with a department for a particular eight hour shift and we have to provide vehicles for them. There is a mistake uh, on there uh, due to uh, a transition from uh, stormwater to parks and the availability for mowers is not 82%. Year to date, it's 99%, so it's better than that. But I'll tell you, We've been working hard to keep those mowers uh, going and uh, we get about two or three more and we're out of the woods on them. Then if you move up, you'll see two, two metrics on scheduled maintenance. And basically what it is is this, you have two kinds of maintenance. You have scheduled maintenance, which deals with services and you have unscheduled when a piece of equipment comes in and it needs to be repaired. As we modernize our fleet, as we decrease the number of vehicles past their service life, the scheduled maintenance ratio will go higher and the unscheduled maintenance ratio will go lower. Right now it's about 10%, but we're gonna see an improvement on that. Go up to the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the full-time employees. We're in a difficult struggle with the Eagleford Shale on getting mechanics. So what we've done is, is we've gone ahead and done a couple of things. Uh, we've sold the benefits of working for the city and some people get that, uh, particularly uh, uh, a lot of other people don't give those benefits and we're also growing our own in-house. We're finding people that are in other positions within fleet maintenance and so on and so forth. We're bringing them on and we're training them. We've got three or four people in heavy equipment like that right now and that's gonna pay off in the long run and we'll have good employees that wanna stay with us. Operating expenditures, they're basically the same. I've tried to keep them, uh, I'm funded properly. I've tried to keep it about $9 million. Uh, I don't wanna put any other pressure on, on this budget uh, than it is. If you look at uh, our report of the complete budget, it's up around 20 and that's because of fuel and capital uh, expenditures. But the real operating budget's about 9 million. Uh, Vehicles and rolling stock were decreasing. That's what we wanted to do. That's what the Mercury study said that we needed to do. Uh, direct labor is strictly a, a calculation of how much hands-on people are working on uh, equipment. In other words, if they're taking a break, if they're waiting for parts, it's not direct labor. If they're hands-on, it is, it is direct labor. Uh, repair of out, uh, uh, outsourced uh, costs is the next one down, it's going down. And the reason it's going down is because we're modernizing the fleet. And so uh, you'll see these little indicators on this report occur as we go along and, and, and head in the direction we wanna go. Now percent of fleet fasted service life, and I'm gonna add a couple of, of uh, uh, verbal uh, parameters that don't fit in on this, that, that are not on this report. And in 11 and 12, we were 59% past its service life uh, there was a considered effort, uh, considerable effort, not only by our department, but also by the executive staff and the manager to lower that number. Uh, 12 and 13, it got down to 46. 
And then last week it got to 40 when you approve those 92 vehicles. It's huge. Um, also, percent of vehicles using alternative fuel in 12 and 13, it was four and a half percent. You doubled it last week. And finally, uh, I've got uh, a number of cost of vehicles replaced. Um, I've got to find the numbers for 10 and 11 and 11 and 12. Uh, we've, we've struggled with them a little bit, but for 12 and 13, it's six and a half million. And for 13 and 14, which is not on your report, it's 7.8 million. And we expect hopefully pretty much the same number next year. And that includes my report. Uh, I think you can see the trends we're heading uh, toward. Uh, I, I frankly quite enjoy seeing those trends like that. I mean, it's just, it's great to, uh, it's great to see that. So uh, we appreciate your support in the fleet. And does anybody have any questions? Uh, Council Member McIntyre. Thank, thank you. I, ju I just had a question on the, the lower part on maintain the fleet. Are those uh, last three lines, are those percentages of availability of those? Vehicles? Yes. So availability of required wastewater vacuum trucks, we have 274% of what's required? Right. We have six vacuum trucks. What we're looking for is the availability of vacuum trucks over an eight-hour shift. They need three. Okay. If I, if I can give them four and five, the reason I have that on there is they're really difficult to maintain. They've okay. got a lot of moving parts on there, so we want to put them on there. Uh, it hadn't always been this way, uh -huh. but right now we're sitting in pretty good shape on it. So it's by shift. Now, if we were to take the total availability of vacuum trucks, all six of them over a 365-day period, it would not be, it would be, I don't know, I'd have to speculate 80%, 70%, something like that. Right, so that increase in percentage allows you to, to roll them out for scheduled maintenance or exactly. repairs and all of those things. That's, that's exactly that's, correct. So you don't truly want to be at 100%. You that, want to be far right. greater than that. Do, do you know what percentage? I would assume like wastewater vacuum would be a, you really want to be over 200%. Or police, you might want to be at 151. Is there, is there a greater indicator of what percentage we truly want in each of these categories better than a hundred percent yeah i would i would want close to 200 uh, percent and and here's the situation with a vac vector truck the the life of a vector truck is six years they have six trucks so if if you want to stay up with what's modern in vector trucks you buy one every year in the past Sometimes we haven't been able to do that, so we tough it out a little bit. But we bought one last year. We bought one this year. They're very expensive. They're about three hundred thirty thousand dollars. How old's our oldest one right now? Pardon? How old is the oldest one right now? Probably. Probably about seven or eight years. Okay, so about two hundred percent in those. But in the police and and refuse trucks and stuff, that percentage would be a little bit lower. As it's it's going to be lower because what we're doing is we're in the process of modernizing our refuse truck fleet. But there's still a dozen refuse trucks that we have. That, that were the original ones that we bought, and they're running well, but they're 12 years old. The average life of a refuse truck is seven to eight years. Would, would it be beneficial to match, make that target match a little bit better with what we really need operationally for availability, like you mentioned? Well, school. we're meeting, we're, we're, you know, it, it is an accurate hack of, of, of what you're meeting. Basically, what's going on is, is if you have 100%, you're meeting your routes. And what we want to do is meet the routes. And... The, the, for instance, in refuse trucks, there's an awful lot of activity on refuse trucks that aren't on those routes. So I, what I want to do is, is I want to have spares on the routes. Right. That's what, what, that's what I'm wondering is if, if showing that it's a greater than 100 percent, that we really want 150 or we really want 200 or we really want 110 or whatever. You know, I've never saying. thought of it that way, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm real comfortable with 150 percent for for, yeah. for refuse trucks. The big thing I want to be able to do on refuse trucks is to give Lawrence enough trucks so he, his routes are covered. Because my thought is when we're looking at this or when a resident looks at this and they see us buying more vehicles and they look and say, you want 100% and you have 274% and you're buying a new one, why? And it's because we really don't want 100%. We need some recycling right. through. So I'm just wondering if we might. I can I can look at that, that and come up with I can come up with different targets of percentage. I have no problem doing that yeah. at all. I think that that would help us if we're looking. Sure. At that. Great. Thank you. You bet. Uh, Mr. McGill. Okay. Thank you. And uh, my my question is more towards uh, risk mitigation and uh, driving safety. I, you and I have talked a little bit about it, and I've talked with Margie about it a little bit too about um, having a. Um, 
easy to read how am I driving on the back of all city vehicles. Um, I've gotten some, some requests from citizens that are looking for the, uh, some way to call in and say, hey, this such and such vehicle was driving. We, our our intention with that is, 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 I understand what your quest is, Councilman, and, and basically our intention is to put that in as a decision package and see if uh, executive staff will approve it. Okay, great. Yeah, and, and I understand the cost associated is minimal, but, well, but the it, reality is, it, you know, you're giving the citizen the ability to call understand. into the call center. and Great, thank you for putting that in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Davis, uh, there's a lot of moving parts literally in your department and I know you've been doing this a long time, but I, I can't let you leave without acknowledging also how you've been very receptive in following the direction of the unanimous council on the CNG of recognizing uh, the benefits regarding environment and also cost efficiencies, but there's obviously a lot more that you do, but I just want to say thank you for all the hard work that well, you're doing. Well, I thank you, Mayor. I think the key thing to remember here is really that this is a team effort. In other words, the council approves the budget. They approve the purchase of these, of, of these vehicles. The manager gives me direction, and my boss, Margie, gives me direction on what we have to do. So we're all kind of in this together. And I've been here when it hadn't been this way in, in, in terms of being able to purchase vehicles. And, and we, we've gotten a little bit behind, and, and I think we have an aggressive program now. And I think we're looking at the alternative fuel game very seriously. So I think we're, we're headed in the right direction. Thank you very much. You Good bet. report. One, one other thing I want to say is we're going to come to you in about a month or so and uh, request to upgrade our M4 system, which is a maintenance management system, to M5, which is a web-based system. What that will do is it will allow departments to look at their own maintenance effort and their own funds and everything else, it's a good move. And I want to introduce uh, Tamara Malo. She's our senior uh, functional analyst. Uh, she's very capable in that kind of thing, and she's the project manager for M5, and she's accumulated and, and gathered up and published all this data you've seen today. So she's an integral part of what we're trying to do. Great. Look forward to it. Mr. Olson, do you have anything else? <clears throat> Mayor, I do not have any other reports this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much.